Hello, good morning, good afternoon. I'm Annabelle Castaldo coming to you from Oakland, California, virtually with the Grand Lake Gardens community, wishing the whole human good family a wonderful day and a wonderful class. I'm glad that I can meet the rest of you out there, um, kind of, anyway, meet you. And I've been teaching this lovely group of people for almost two years. We've kind of developed the class, I wanna to say, together. So there's a lot of people here that have kind of brought in ideas and feedback from their experience of the movements I teach, and we continue to grow and learn together. So a couple of things that I like to use in the class, which is called, I don't know if I named it now, but I'm gonna tell you now, it's called Chair Pilates with Annabelle. I've been teaching Pilates for 20 years, and in this class, we do the most of the movements in a chair. Some of, um, some of the time I'll have you come up standing if you want. You don't have to, you can remain seated and just do some of the movements with your feet or with your legs sitting on the chair if you're more comfortable. Um, we also use a tennis ball. If you don't have that, you could use a soup can, okay? So soup can, if you don't have that. If you don't have a six inch myofascial ball, which may not be lying around at this point, unless you order one and you can through Amazon, Power Systems six inch ball. I don't get plugged, but it's the best one that I found. Um, you can use a pillow and you'll just position the pillows where we position the ball. We often use it for support and for feedback. And I'll, I'll show you how to do that. Then we use a towel. Um, a basic kitchen towel or a, a hand towel, and a TheraBand, which can easily be purchased um, or probably found in any um, gym or physical center. So it's easy to get your hands on that. So when we start the class, I always start with the feet. And so for those of you who haven't had this experience with me before from the beginning, I'm going to just change my angle here so you can see my foot. And I'm also going to take um, my sock off. Uh, we always start with the feet because we want to wake up the body, which is completely connected and all one unit from the ground up. So we want to sort of wake up the antenna, if you will, in the feet. So just putting the tennis ball or your can of soup under your foot, we just start to roll the foot. And the people in this community that I've been teaching are probably like, have this memorized at this point. But I'm gonna tell you that your foot is organized in longitudinal lines of fascia. So what I like to do first is run the ball along those lines, okay? So I start at the big toe and go down to the heel. And I do that maybe two or three passes per line and you can think of the lines as matching up with the toes. So the second toe line, the third toe line, so on and so forth, going from inner to outer. And once I do that, and of course you can do this sitting, I have just come to stand up because it's easier to see my foot and I can apply more pressure. So that's a question, how much pressure? Well, you don't want it to be painful, but it's okay to feel some tender spots. It's okay to break up some of maybe the tension that you might be feeling in those tender spots in the foot. That's all good. But again, you want to stay away from things like pain and strain. Okay. So once I do the longitudinal lines, I go and spot treat. So I kind of want to cover the whole foot and I go in little micro movements where I'm just rolling out the tension in the foot. Um, kind of focusing on the areas that might be tender and need it more. So um, 30 seconds to a minute is good. Try to hit all the corners of the foot. Be careful when you get out to the side because if you apply too much pressure, it'll pop out. You'll probably find that will happen. Um, it happens a lot. And also try to get to the heel a little bit. So definitely get to the heel. And as you're rolling, try to spread your toes. Try to actually move your toes, right? 
there are 31 joints and articulations in the foot and 26 bones. So we wanna move a lot. I spend a lot of time on the feet because there's so much going on down there and we kind of need them. We expect a lot out of them. And so they deserve a good workout. Although we might not think about working our feet out as much as we do our quadriceps or our legs, we really do place a lot of force on the feet and expect a lot out of them. So we want to keep them strong and mobile, okay? So once I do the rolling, I'm gonna put my heel down. This is important. Don't have your heel up, but have it down and put the ball of the foot on top of the ball. So just sort of in front of the heel, in front of the arch or at the arch, and then try to wrap the toes as much as you can around the ball like you're perching on a branch and then stretch the toes away from each other as you pull up off the ball. So the toes wrap around the ball and then we reach and we wrap and we reach and we wrap and we reach. Now let's add a movement. So I'm gonna separate the movement of pushing the ball of the foot down and then wrapping the toes lifting the toes and lifting the ball. It's very small, very subtle, but it's gonna be ball pushes, then the toes wrap, then I lift the toes while my ball of the foot is still down and then lift. So it's ball, toe, toe, ball. Ball, toe, toe, ball. Two more times, ball, toe, toes, ball, I should say, and ball, toe, and toes, ball. Good and then just jump over the ball to lift the heel and come back down and go over. So that's a pointed foot and then a flex foot and two more and flex and one more and flex. So when I move on to the next exercise, remember this move because you can do this on the tennis ball. Everybody can find a tennis ball somewhere, even if you have to steal it from your dog, right? So I invite you, if you've never done this before, to stand up and just notice the difference between the foot you rolled and the foot you didn't, if you've never done it before, right? Or even if you have, because it's, it's really a difference. And for me today, ironically, I've done a lot of sitting today. I, I donated blood today, so did a lot of sitting. And I wind up feeling this all the way into my hip that there's some looseness up there. I'm a little bit tighter than I usually am because I haven't been moving around as much. Also, you might feel that the foot's flatter, more grounded into the floor, and that's all necessary and good for balance. So hopefully I've won you over to do the other side. So let's do that other side. And we're gonna push the big toe mound or the big toe metatarsal into the ball. And then we're doing those longitudinal lines first. So row by row, thinking of the toe row, all right? So second toe row. Now, most of us, our toes have not seen the light of day all uh, winter. We have not worn sandals. All the pedicure shops are closed. So please, no judgments on the toes or feet. Um, I don't think you guys would. You're not the judgmental type. So I'm at the midfoot and now I'm on the fourth row, rolling down that foot and then the fifth. And if you like doing the lines better, stick with that. If you want to move on to the little vacuuming, then you vacuum all around. You want to pick up all those crumbs. If the surface of your foot is the floor, you're vacuuming. You wanna get in all those crevices, right? In the arch, by the toes. And this is so important, okay? I just, <laughs> I'm a champion for the feet. So I know you guys have tennis balls in your room and you can do this more than just on Fridays. You can do this every day and you should do it every day. Um, and let's go up by the heel. It certainly feels good um, if you're not pushing too hard. So it's not an unpleasurable process. All right, and just make sure you're getting all the little nooks and crannies. And then let's put the heel down 
with the ball in front. We're gonna wrap the toes. Let's do that five times and then lift and spread the toes. Wrap the toes like a bird on a branch and then spread. Wrap and spread. Wrap, spread, wrap and lift. And then one more time, and then let's break it up into, I'm gonna lift the pressure off the ball, then push into the ball of the foot, ball of the foot into the ball, then wrap. Toe, ball lifts. Ball of the foot presses, push into the ball. Lift the toes, lift the ball of the foot. Press the ball of the foot, wrap the toes. Lift the toes, lift the ball. Ball, toe, toe, ball ball, toe, toe, ball, good. And then let's just stand. Now, if you want to uh, stand up here or you can remain seated, we're gonna do a little balance exercise. So if you are standing with me, please stand behind your chair. Please stand behind your chair for balance. If you're not sitting, if you're still sitting, not a problem. We're just gonna squeeze the ball between the heels. And as we um, anchor down through the legs, I want you to feel what are called the foot centers. So the foot centers are at the big toe ball, behind the fourth and the fifth toe, and the center of the heel. So anchor those points down, whether you're seated or standing. And then from there, align your hips directly over your ankles. So usually that's gonna mean that we're gonna need to bring some weight back. So we've got about 50% of the weight in the foot forward, or maybe I would say even 45. 45 front and 55 back. I hope that adds up to 100. And then holding there, let's just try to take the heels up. Now we're gonna shift into the ball of the foot, that's fine, and then lower the heels down. Lift up. So working the legs a little bit and lower down. You can absolutely hold onto the chair and you should. Lift up and lower down, rise up, feel the length in your spine. You should be looking forward and lower down. You can absolutely again do this um, sitting, just lift your heels and lower. And if you can do five more with me, squeezing that ball, you're lifting the ball up from your heels for four and down and three and down and two and down and last one, and down. And then hopefully your chair will be there and you will have a seat. I'm gonna keep this view so you won't see my head, you're gonna see my foot and the black ball. So now I have the black ball and hopefully it contrast from my rug underneath me. I think it does well enough. I can see it pretty well, yeah. Um, so I'm gonna rest my foot on the ball. Now if you don't have a ball where you are, Use a footstool and just, or put your foot on the ground or use the tennis ball, play with it and just try to get the mechanics of the foot, which I'll show you sideways and front ways. So we're just gonna inhale and take the toes down, kind of rolling over the ball, the front of the ball, and then coming back to flex the heel down. So on the side view, it's gonna look like that. I'm pointing and see how I'm keeping my foot around the ball as much as I can. Now, if your foot's bigger, that, that's fine. But I'm keeping the arch. As I go back into this dorsiflexion, I wanna stretch this part, right? And I'm not lifting my toes up. That's really hard to do. So you might need to practice that a little bit. So I'm going forward. My heel is lifting higher than my ball of my foot than my toes. As I come back, my heel is dropping down, but I'm trying not to lift my toes. So let's do that with an inhale forward and an exhale back and an inhale forward and an exhale back. Good. And an inhale forward and an exhale back. One more forward and one more back. I think I'm going to keep this angle here. So now what I want you to do is pull the ball in, lift the heel. I'm just moving my other leg out of the way. Please keep both of your legs forward and sit directly on your sit bones. So I'm gonna now extend the leg and pull the toes back. Extend the knee here and then come back and lift the heel. Exhale, extend out, pull the toes back, 
and then pull back in and lift the heel. And out and in. Two more, out. This is the same leg I'm doing that I just did, same side. And one more, and in. And then I'm gonna go out and stay. And if you need to move, you know, so that you have a better placement on the ball, do that. Don't just land where you land. Um, and I'm gonna circle. I'm gonna circle around in one direction. I'm really trying to move the ankle, not just swing the toes around, but articulate and move and rotate that ankle joint. Okay, and then I'm gonna go out the other way, around and around and around, good. And this again should feel good, nothing painful here, right? The painful stuff comes later, just kidding. No painful stuff. Okay, so let's just do that much on the other side. So I'm gonna stay with this view, rest your other foot. So we've switched sides, everybody, switch sides, on the ball, and then we're gonna go forward, try to keep the heel down. That's gonna really work this calf muscle here. But then as I come back, right, now I'm working the front, and this has to lengthen, right? So feel that, feel that there the front's lengthening, the back is working, and as I come back, this is stretching and this is working. So inhale forward, exhale, try to keep those toes down when you create that dorsiflexion. Inhale forward, exhale back, inhale, and exhale, and one more inhale, and exhale. And now I go out and I flex, and I come in point and lift the heel, and press out, extend. Come back in and lift the heel. Exhale, inhale, exhale. Use that breath, inhale, exhale. One more, in, and hold out, stay. And we're just gonna point, inhale, exhale, flex. Inhale to point, exhale to flex. Inhale to point. Exhale to flex, inhale, exhale, and last time, and exhale. And then we rotate in one direction, trying to move in a, make a big, as big a circle as you can in one direction, and then go the other direction. Uh-huh, good, one more. All right, and then we bring it back in. Good. Okay, so last thing, I'd like you to stand up again. I'm gonna make you stand up and sit down just a little bit today. So try to stand up here. And we're gonna do one last thing with the feet. This is new, okay? So the first thing I wanna tell you is I want you to bend the knees, but not pitch forward and not lean back. So I want you to just make the tiniest little bend, but stay as upright as you can in your spine. So there's no pitching forward or going back. It's a tiny bend. If I keep this bend really tiny, I'm not really going to feel any pressure in my knees. Also, keep the weight in the heels, okay? You won't have any pressure in your knees. If you feel pressure in your knees, just do the foot and sit down, okay? If you feel pressure in your knees. This is what I wanna show you. I'm gonna come a little closer, you can see my feet. When you bend, I want you to roll to the outside of the feet. The knees are gonna widen just a little bit. And as you exhale, I want you to roll the feet in. This is called pronation and supination. Roll out, supination, the weight goes to the outer foot. And as you bend, I want you to lift those pinkies off the ground. So this is getting a little bit of the side muscles of the lower legs, among other things, right? So we're pushing up through that inner line as we pronate, lift the pinkies off. Let's do two more. So I'm rolling out to the outer foot. And as I come up, I'm rolling to the inner foot. Going down, I'm to the outer foot and then to the inner foot. Okay, now I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna bend in the inner foot and roll out to the outer foot as I come up. Roll in, small, roll out. Little in, little bend, very small, and out to the outer foot, to the inner foot, to the outer foot, 
to the inner foot. And hopefully as you're doing that, you can feel the backs of your legs, that's enough, come alive. So we're just gonna shake that out, okay? And I'm gonna move on to the pelvis. So we're gonna sit back down. And we're going to bring the ball to the lower spine. So the ball is gonna go into the small of the back. You could also use a cushion or a pillow, but you want it to fit in the low back area just for support and for feedback, okay? So I might show this in two directions, but I'll start with this one. The first thing we're just gonna do is take a breath in. And as we exhale, we wanna kind of tilt the pelvis under. So the pubic bone goes forward. And then as I come back and inhale, I'm sort of dropping my pubic bone down. Another reference point would be your sit bones, the bones that you're sitting on. As you exhale and roll back, you're going behind your sitting bones. And as you inhale and lift up, you're going to the front or the tops of them or right on top stacking. So as you go back and curl, pulling the abdominals in, you're behind and then you lift up, you're in front, exhale behind. So we are moving the pelvis here. The goal here is to move the pelvis. My chair is a little slippery, so um, I'm sliding around a little bit, so don't mind me. So what we're trying to do is tilt both directions. Now we tend as we get older to kind of sit into this flattened low back. So what I'd like to emphasize with the ball here is that we're, we've got a nice little curve in our back. So let's stay there. And using that perch idea, perch yourself on top of those sit bones. So feel yourself very straight on them. Feel yourself evenly weighted on those, again, I mean, it's the knobby bones, right? That surface, that hard surface that you're sitting on. And then from there, put your hands around your rib cage, hug yourself a little bit, and take a nice full deep breath in, expanding your hands sideways. And as you exhale, sort of draw your waistline away from your hands, and at the same time, draw your belly button back to the ball. That's a lot to do. Inhale, try to widen through your ribs, outwards and sideways, and as you exhale, pull your stomach in towards the ball. So I'm inhaling and I'm trying to create width through the ribs, sideways, and as I exhale, I want to narrow the waistline, narrow the girth of the rib cage, and pull the stomach in at the same time. Let's do that two more times. Inhale. Looking to activate the core muscles and exhale. Shh. Draw that belly button back. And one more time. Inhale. And exhale. Shh. all the way back, good. Okay, so holding there, holding the belly in, I'm gonna try to, ha to have my belly serve as a, as a stability, a force of stability for my hips. So I'm gonna try not to shift them as I lift my legs. I'm also gonna use holding my chair wherever I can for support. So setup number one, sit directly on those sit bones. Setup number two is feel the length in your trunk, your torso, and your spine, as if you could lift your rib cage away from your pelvis. And number three is draw that belly button back towards the ball. Feel the connection of your core or of your belly muscles just a little bit. And then they're gonna naturally, hopefully, answer the call of try not to shift and lift your right leg up and lower down. Try not to shift and lift your left leg up and lower it down. So the main thing, and I love this, and I can't ever say this enough, it's the most important thing game. The most important thing right now in what we're doing is the stability of the spine. So the non-motion is more important than, here's the leg lifting. See how my rib cage is dropping down and things are dropping, things are moving, or I'm going to shift off my sit bone. That's what I want to avoid. So maybe I can only take my foot off a centimeter. 
and that's fine. It's not a really about lifting the leg. It's really about asking your core muscles to respond to this ask. You're asking them to do something. So are they willing to respond? I don't know. Mine are responding. Sometimes they're reluctant. And sometimes we have to think, oh, I want this to happen. I want this idea of the center. So can you lift your left leg from your center, hold it, extend it, bend it, put it back down. Ask yourself to do that, moving from the center. Extend, bend, and put it down. So I'm thinking of initiating this movement from the center of my body, from my belly button, from my abdominals, or maybe I'm just using the idea of I don't wanna shift. I don't wanna shift my pelvis back to the left side, lift, lengthen. If you're on a different side, it doesn't matter. And down, right side, lift, lengthen, down, bend, and down. And one more time, lift, lengthen, good, and bend, and down. Okay, now we massage. Those vertebra, those muscles around the vertebra are working really hard. It's not just the abdominals, the back muscles are working. We're asking them to work quite a lot too. Okay, I'm gonna just do a side view. It's basically the same thing, but now we're upping the ante some more. And we're upping the ante by not using our hands, maybe. So I like genie arms. I always wanted to be genie when I was a kid. So I like that. Or you could just hold your arms to the side or just dangle them down. Try it. You can always hold back on. So from the center, can you lift the right leg without moving? And lower. And exhale your left. Maybe one side, and this is just interesting, that probably one side is easier to do than the other. You are not alone. Don't feel alone. Um, usually we have a stronger, more stable side, and that's totally fine. So we're gonna do about eight. This is, I'm on six here, and we're right, and down, and we're left. So I'm gonna up the ante now twice. So we're gonna lift the right, extend it, then you're gonna open it. So I'm bringing my leg towards you, you're bringing it out to the side, bend, and bring it down. Other side, left lift, knee lift, knee extend. Open the leg, close the leg, bend the knee, put the foot down. Again, right side, lift, lengthen. Can you open without shifting, staying grounded on those sit bones, bend and down, it's not easy. From the center, left, lengthen, open, in, bend, and down. Let's do one more each side. So right, lengthen, stay with me, open, in, bend, and down. And other side, extend, open, in, bend, relax, and you just massage. If you don't have a ball, well, you can take your hands back there, do a little massage, rub. This is a good thing to do. Rub it out. It's working hard and you want to give it a little reward. Okay, a couple more things and then I'll show you my face. We'll move the ball up. So what I want to do next is a pelvic rotation. So this one is very clear if you're doing it or not doing it. If you're doing this and moving your hips, your knees will slide. One will go in front of the other and one will drop back, okay? So the ball is still at the low back. And I'm gonna start by inhaling to prepare and exhaling to rotate from my hip bone to the right side. Stay there and take a peek. Your right knee should be behind your left knee. That, that means your pelvis and hips are moving. And then inhale to come back to center. Exhale, we're gonna rotate to the left. Start the rotation at your pelvis if you possibly can and then inhale back to center. So we exhale, you can put your hands on your thighs to encourage your knees to slide past each other and then look, take your gaze over with you, look behind you and come back or at least start to look in that direction that you're moving and we go to the left. Looking to the left, 
turning the body and center. So I'm not just doing my hips, I'm starting with my hips and then turning the ribs and then the head and center. Starting at the hip, waist, ribs, shoulder, head, and then coming back one more time. Starting at the hip, waist, ribs, shoulder, head, return back. And last time, turning, looking at something and then inhaling to return back, good. And then create a little massage. Okay, I do wanna do one more set of abduction, which means taking the leg away. So we're putting our hands down. This is a new addition, okay? So if you're just starting with this class, you can also just do some of the reps and not all of them, okay? I would recommend that. So extend the right leg out and then open and close. And we're gonna do that eight times. Two, and I want you to feel your hip muscles, okay? Try not to over tense the quad. The quad's working strong in the front of the thigh, but really try to focus on the movement happening at your hip, okay? You will feel other places, it's okay. I think that's, uh, I think this is seven. I'm gonna call that seven and I'm gonna call that eight and hopefully I'm close and bend and relax, okay? So that's a little abduction, a little hip work. Extend the other leg, flex the foot. Hands can hold or not. I'm gonna hold open and close because I really wanna concentrate on my hip moving or my hip muscles moving the leg, right? But I'm not really shifting a lot off course here. So I'm stabilizing pretty strongly through my core. Five, exhale, six. Inhale back, exhale seven. Use the inner thighs to return the leg and eight. And in, bend and relax. Good. Okay, let's do a final massage there. We'll move the ball on up in a moment. I hope we're doing okay. Are we doing okay? GLG, yes? Okay. All right, so at this point, let us get our TheraBand and maybe the towel close by if you're gonna use that. So we'll have our TheraBand and I'm gonna change my angle so you can see my face. And I'm gonna turn once again to the side so that you can see my placement of the ball. I'm gonna bring the ball in between my shoulder blades. And I want that feedback. I have to go pretty high up on my chair. Um, but I like using this chair because it's see-through and I can actually stand behind and people can still see me. So it's a good tool for teaching. So I want this at my upper back now, right? Okay. And the first thing I want to do here, so I'm going to turn back this way because now you saw where it goes. Okay, the first thing I'd like to do is go back to breathing again. So let your TheraBand rest for a second. Bring your hands up to your sternum, to your breastbone. And I, I'd like you to all breathe in and feel that sternum rise. So your sternum should move up. It should be pulled up as you inhale. And exhale. And I have to tell you that I learned in a class that I'm taking today about, that I'm taking about fascia, the connective tissue that wraps the whole body that every time you breathe, your heart is being pulled as well. So nothing is separate, guys. We are working and moving our hearts here, which is kind of a beautiful idea. When we inhale and we take in, that's kind of nice, and we exhale and let it go. So feel that sternum move. Now, our sternums can get stuck, and they don't want to move, right? Our hearts can get stuck too, but I, that'll be another class for another, right? Don't wanna go into too many of those new agey ideas. But inhale, let this lift up. And I'm pushing it because I'm saying, I want you sternum to go up. I want you to move. So I'm encouraging it in case it is a little stuck and maybe I'm gonna press it, like kind of the same idea as rolling the ball. I'm, I'm, I'm rolling around my, my sternum a little bit to see if I can let it move a little better. Okay, 
it kind of works a little bit. And then I'm going to look up as I inhale and exhale, come back down. So as you inhale, let the sternum lift and also your gaze lift and exhale, come back down. Inhale, feel your heart lift. Exhale. Inhale, feel your mood lift. And exhale, all that can shift with that uplifting. It is uplifting. And exhale, let's do one more. Inhale and exhale. So this is so important, this carriage, right? I don't know if you've ever seen the Charlie Brown, I and mean, I have to digress here. There's a, a, a cartoon of Charlie Brown walking with, I think it's Linus, I'm pretty sure, and he's all hunched over, and he said, um, what is, and he, it had something to do with, it's really hard to be in a happy place when you're all hunched over like this. And I think I'm saying it wrong, because I think, you know, Charlie Brown was depressed all the time, and I think he may have been standing up and saying, it's really hard to be depressed, when you're standing like this, so I better do this and hunch over, right? So that was very poorly delivered, but you get the point that this uplifting sense, not just for the muscles, but for our overall outlook and our overall well being, super important, okay? So we wanna build that. So I spend a lot of time, like I do with the feet, up in this upper carriage. So let's work with that now. So let's start to work with some arm movements without the band, and we're just gonna take the arms and lift them up with no band, and then open them out to the side. And basically what we're doing here is defining what's the comfort level for me to lift without feeling strain. I wanna identify what that's like for me to not feel strain, but just kind of feel ease through my shoulders, an opening maybe through the chest. And let's just do that two more times, coordinating with some inhale and exhale. So inhale, let the arms travel up, exhale, open. Good. And inhale, lift. Good, and exhale, open. Nice. So let's inhale up here. And then can we exhale and take a little side bend over to the right, Dropping that right arm down. Good. And then lift up. And let's do the same on the right. Be sure that you're moving your spine a little bit, not just your arms, but good. Yes, yes, beautiful. Inhale, lift. Exhale one more time to the right. Try to lift yourself up from your center. And then exhale over. And up from center and inhale, hold there, and exhale, come down. Good, and let's just one more time, shoulder roll, inhale, exhale back. So just some preliminary movements, inhale, exhale back. As you move through these rolls, can you think about moving from your upper back, right? So these movements, we can think of them coming from anywhere we want, really. It's our brains and our neuromuscular system, so, it's our party, we can determine where we wanna move from. So let's go the other way and really think of this concept of what is it like to create this movement from my upper back. You could also just create this movement maybe from your neck or your head or not think about it at all. But if you direct it from your upper back, it's gonna be a little bit different. Just as if I say lift your right arm from your neck. Okay, that's not a good class to take. Lift your left arm from your upper back. That feel a little different? That's a little bit more spacious. Let's do it on the right side. Lift the right arm from the upper back. It creates more space naturally in the neck area, right? Than if we don't think about it. So don't think about it and you're probably gonna do it from the upper back anyway, because it's in there, good. So let's keep that idea. Let's take the TheraBand and start to work on some of the strengthening. So we'll do strengthening and mobilization throughout, go back and forth. So we hold the, um, the TheraBand in our hands with the palms up 
and take a light grip. Hold the elbows. I'm going to turn to the side and my ball's going to go away, but bear with that. The elbows stay in at the ribs. They're not back here because that would make it really hard to move. And they're not in front. They're just kind of hanging so that this humerus bone is just nice and, and straight. So from here, I'm going to tug on the band and rotate my upper arm bones out. Rotate my upper arm bones. Okay, so that means you want to create an outward rotation up at the top of the shoulder, in the shoulder joint, right? So you can think of it that way if that's accessible to you. If it's more accessible to you to think of spreading your collarbones, maybe that's better. Maybe go with that. Maybe you like feeling the back of the shoulder working and that's helpful. Or maybe some combination of all three. Let's exhale and rotate those upper arm bones out. This is a rotator cuff exercise and three, but other things are definitely helping. And two, and in, and one more, and in. Let's alternate sides. So we go right and in. It'll be a little bit less, that's okay, and left. And in, see if you can really feel the turning in the socket and in. And as you do this, and once you're comfortable doing it, notice your carriage. Where's your breastbone? Is it kind of lifted up? Do you feel kind of long? Just by virtue of doing what we're doing, we're all pretty long. We're sitting up pretty upright here. You kind of have to. It's really hard to do this exercise like this, right? So this is a nice thing that when we do this upper body work, we're sort of just naturally in this nice long position. Let's shake that out a little bit. Roll the shoulders. If you start to feel tension in your neck, my rule is a little side-by-side -side distraction, like, oh, my neck. We all have necks. We all have over-involved necks. It's par for the course. They will work. If it becomes so overwhelming that it, it nullifies the other work you're feeling in the shoulders or the back, that's when you wanna take a break back off, stretch your neck out a little bit, move it. In fact, let's do that now. Let's just take our arms down, drop the right ear to the right shoulder. So this is something you could just do, just to give it some relaxation, lift it up, not for too long, but just kind of let it release for a moment and come back and then maybe turn to the right and back to center and turn to the left and back to center and then go back to the exercise. So next one, I'll show you the side view. I'm gonna thread the, the TheraBand underneath the ball. So it goes under the ball and then I have our already rotated position, okay? And my arms are gonna go out to an angle. So I'm holding either side. And on the exhalation, I'm reaching out, not to a fully straight arm, but almost straight. And then come back in and let those shoulder blades draw in. So we extend out to the side and in. So I'm gonna show you this view. We go out and in. So it's like spreading your wings. We go exhale and in. So feeling the chest opening and the back opening, really everything opening as we, it's very nice. Exhale four, everybody looks beautiful. I love this exercise because there's almost no way to do it wrong. It just kind of opens you up, it settles the shoulders down, right? And it just feels good too. Let's do three more, exhale and in. You all look beautiful, really. And Three, feel how long your spine is, how tall you're sitting, good. And then let's try to do a little, uh, a little extra choreography here, right? So we're gonna take the arms facing forward and then extend there. Can you extend straight out, but keep your chest open? That's a little harder. Go straight out. Just. I'm only going to do four of these and pull back and three. When you pull back, can you squeeze your shoulder blades around the ball a little bit? And then last one, four and pull back. 
Okay, now we're gonna rotate out, in, de-rotate, hands go forward. So just a little extra movement, rotate, reach out, expand those wings, in and in, and out. Lengthen out, in and forward. One more, out, in. You should be feeling those backs here, those upper backs. Good. And one more time, go out and hold. Just hold comfortably, because you're gonna be here a minute. And we're gonna rotate to the left, and I'm, I'm going to the left first because I can't go to the right. So you're gonna go to the right, we're gonna come back, and you're gonna go to the right by yourself as you exhale. And then come back to the center. And we're gonna exhale to the left. And inhale. I'm staying perched on my sit bones and moving my trunk on my pelvis. So I'm rotating to the left, my left ribs go back, my right ribs come forward, and the opposite when I go forward. Then my right ribs go back, left ribs forward as I go to the right, and I come back. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Take a break, we're gonna add on, roll the shoulders back. Remember what you need to do to take care of your neck if you need to. Stretch it out, turn it, move it, up, down, get it mobile. Okay, now we're just gonna add a little choreography, okay? So we're gonna go out, halfway in, rotate, out, in all the way to the other side, to the left. Reach out, let the elbows come back in. Go all the way to the right. Exhale out, inhale in. Exhale all the way to the other side. Keep, keep flipping the breath, inhale, reach out. Exhale, pull in. Inhale, come all the way to the other side. Exhale, reach. Inhale in, exhale, rotate. Inhale out, exhale in, inhale, rotate. Exhale out, inhale in, exhale, rotate. Last time. Exhale out, I think, inhale in, come to center, and that's it. That was a lot. That was a lot. So if you didn't finish that, it's okay. You have to stop. Um, when you need to. Shoulders roll back. How are we doing? Good? We're good. Okay, so let's do chest expansion, my, my favorite. But before we do chest expansion, and I want to teach it today with the actual head turns, so just let your hands rest on your thighs for a moment and turn your head to the right without straining and without moving your left shoulder. So your left shoulder is gonna stay back and you're gonna turn the head, come back center. Can you do that? Now the right shoulder will stay and you just turn and look over your left shoulder and come back and look over your right and center and left and center and right and center and left and center. Okay, so let's add wrapping the legs. So the TheraBand goes around your lower legs underneath your knees. Hope you can see that, I think you can. Okay, so we're gonna hold and let's practice how much tension we want because the idea of this exercise is to open the chest, not to work out your arms, right? So we wanna, really feel that as we take the arms back behind us, yes, we're engaging back muscles, arm muscles, but we're opening the chest, we're creating an opening. So for me, with my tension of my TheraBand, I'm not going very far. The other thing is that I'm not just going back, but I'm going down and back. So you can see the difference, see back, see down and back. Because I'm actually trying to reach my arms long before I take them back. That also restricts the range of motion from being too big, right? So let's try that. Exhale down and back as we exhale. Inhale forward. 
and the band can go slack. Exhale, down and forward. And we wanna take that moment where we actually do feel, what am I feeling? My upper back, the backs of my arms, underneath my armpits. Don't jut your ribs forward. I just caught myself and that's my thing. Forward and exhale, down and back. So what's your thing? Maybe you need to check into your ribs. Maybe you need to pull into your abdominals a little more to help support your back. Two more times. I still have that ball. Well, I don't, but you do at your upper back. So I do want you to, I do want to mention that. Yeah. So down and back hold. Let's hold that and turn the head to the right. Turn it all the way to the left. Look to the center and then release. Take the arms down and back. Look to the left, to the right. So I'll change the di first direction each time and then release. Again, down and back to the right first. We go right, left, center, release. Exhale, down and back. Don't forget to breathe, left. Floating the head right. Think of your head just floating atop of your spine. Down and back, right, left, center, release. Exhale, down and back, last time, left, floaty head, right, and center, release. That's good, and relax the shoulders. Okay, so let's work into a little a deduction of the shoulder blades. So that means that the shoulder blades are going to squeeze around this ball. So that's my, my motive. My motive is not the arm motion, although the arm motion is part of it. The arms are in front at shoulder height. I'm going to open my band and bring my band back, but my focus is to squeeze my shoulder blades together and not jut the ribs forward, and then slowly bring it back with control. Exhale, squeeze the shoulder blades into the ball, and they go away from the ball and we squeeze. So we're just thinking of moving from those shoulder blades. Try to keep the neck nice and long, look straight ahead. This is four and forward. This is five, slow forward. On the exhale, we open and forward. I think we have two more and forward and last one. And good, okay. From here, we're gonna lift the arms up now with the TheraBand. If you need to bend your elbows because that's more comfortable, that is totally fine. And then come down. So here, allow the shoulder blades to move freely on the rib cage. They're rotating in this position. They're basically coming up underneath the armpits as those arms go up. And if you can feel that, it's just kind of nice to feel like, oh, I didn't know that was happening. It's happening, and I know many of you have felt it. So as you're lifting the arms up, the shoulder blades kind of wrap underneath here, right? And they open up and, and go up the arm a little bit. We want them to do that. Don't try to restrict that motion. Although we don't want to lift the shoulders up towards the ears, we do want those shoulder blades to lift. So can you hold this here? Okay, now we're just going to go up and over slightly to the right, just slightly and pull that right arm down one, and lift it up with control. Just two more times, two, and lift it up with control, and pull three, and lift it up with control. Come back up to center, bring the arms down, and we lift up, and we go up and over to the side, and we pull that left arm one. Keep the right arm where it is, and up, and two, and up, and three, and up, and come back center. And if you want a little shoulder stretch, bring your arms back to a point where you feel a stretch. Arms just come back, no strain. The motto is no strain, no strain, and no pain, no pain, right? That's the motto, that's the philosophy. And let that come down and just shake your shoulders out. Okay, so now we're gonna move into extension. Put the ball in a slightly different place. A t uh, and I mean slightly. So if I was between my shoulder blades up here, maybe I want to come down to just a little bit lower than my shoulders, or if it was down here, maybe I want to move it up an inch. 
just place it an inch difference from where it was so that it feels good. So it feels like a nice, good place. Nothing lower than where you would have a heart rate monitor or the bra line, okay guys? So nothing lower than that. Okay, so now we're gonna work on extension. And to work on extension properly, I talk a lot about don't throw the head back. So when this part of the spine that we were moving, when we were moving the sternum, when this part doesn't wanna really talk to each other, the front and the back, and this doesn't wanna happen, what winds up happening is this. And that is not something that we need. We don't need a lot of this. We, we can have motion in the neck, yes, but we want the motion to be in the upper back. So one of um, the people at Grand Lake Gardens came up with, or we both came up with together, this little positioning for the hand where your knuckle, or this is my version anyway, I've had this for a while, the knuckle rests, the thumb knuckle rests against the, uh, the breastbone, and then your pink, uh, index finger is where the chin rests. So you hold that as like a placeholder for your head position. And then move your upper back. It's kind of awkward. It's hard to talk in that position around that ball. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the side view. It's a little awkward. We're not gonna do it for too long, but it's a really good technique for forcing yourself to not move only in the head or the neck and move that upper back, right? So as awkward as it is, it does make you move around where the ball is, okay? So once you have that, you can let that go and either, I'm just gonna use my band, you can use your towel, so I guess I should show both because some people won't have bands and this is a good thing to do. So I can take my towel, I want it to be pretty long around, the base of my skull. So not down here at the neck and not up on the top, but across the base of the skull, what's called, it should be holding the occipital ridge, okay? So I'm gonna think about that hand position that I just had and have my chin directly over my breastbone. And that relationship won't change as I inhale and move my spine over the ball and exhale. So that relationship between my chin and the sternum stays and I'm creating movement over the ball. So those spine bones right where my ball is, is where I'm putting my focus. Let's inhale here, exhale to return to a lengthened spine position, inhale, I'm not collapsing to come back. I'm coming back strong in a nice long and lifted line. Inhale and exhale. Inhale. I have to say it's much nicer with a towel than the TheraBand. I've been using the TheraBand mostly and this is much better. Keep going, give me four more. I'm gonna reset up because I need to show you a different view. Give me two more. So we want the arms open a little bit. I'm seeing some of the arms like this. So I just wanna, because you couldn't see that from that direction, take a little break because the arms get tired. I think it's worth taking a break. Um, just for a second. And if you didn't have a towel and you can grab one quickly, I, I have to say it's, it's so much better the TheraBand. Um, I really do like it much more. So, and this is a great towel, like a nice long towel, if you have one. Um, it, does, it does make a difference. And then here's, here's where my arms aren't. I want them more open. I want the chest to be open, right? And then of course, let your shoulders just kind of de-shrug and be down. Okay, here we go. Think about the relationship between the chin and the sternum remaining the same and inhale, come up. You can look up with your eyes and exhale, come down. You can look up and let that chin just move a tiny bit. So let the neck go a little bit now. You did it one way, now let's allow the head to be part of it. 
because if we let the head move, it will enhance the extension of the upper spine, but don't let it take over the movement that you're looking. You shouldn't be totally looking up to the ceiling directly above you. That's too much, but you can see the ceiling in front of you, not directly above you. Two more times. Inhale and exhale. Pull the stomach in to return and inhale and exhale. Okay, let's relax that. Shake those arms out. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, so let's add rotation to that extension, right? Why not? So one more time, take your band or your towel and take your elbows comfortably out, relax the shoulders. So if you wanna watch me first one time, I'm gonna go into that extension and then I'm gonna rotate. As I rotate, the ball is going to roll a little bit out to the side, the side that I'm moving towards, and then it'll return back to the middle and then I'll come back up, okay? So let's all go to the left side first. So we're gonna extend the spine, then we're gonna rotate and that ball's gonna to move towards the left. It's gonna move over the left shoulder blade and then return back to center and sit tall. Extend the spine, rotate right, ball moves right. Come back or you're just moving if you don't have a ball and that's fine. And we inhale up, rotate, derotate, Come back, that is definitely a word in the Pilates world. Inhale, rotate, and derotate. Come back to center. Last time, extend the spine, rotate, return, and center, and relax. Shake those arms out. And let's do one more rotation. Drop the ball down one inch reach the arms forward, okay? And we're going to, let's actually open the arms to this side. Let's try that. So slightly in front of you, um, not straight back here, right? And we're gonna turn the trunk to the right and exhale back to center. This is the, the breathing is where you're changing it from what we've done before. We're gonna inhale and rotate left. Exhale, come back to the center. Inhale to rotate right. Exhale, pull from the center to return. Inhale to the left and exhale, return. Take the arms down. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, open. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, open. Let's do one more of those. Inhale, lift the arms. And exhale, open, good. Lift the arms back out to the side. This time, a little more complicated. We're gonna rotate to the right, but not quite as much. Take your left arm up and your right arm down and back. So one arm's going up, one arm's going back and down, but they're both going back, right? And then come back to center, good. Twist to the left or rotate left, Right arm goes up, left arm goes back. And center, arms return. Rotate right. Left arm up and back, right arm down and back. Come back to the center. We're working the back muscles again. Twist to the left. Right arm goes up and back, left arm down and back. Come back center, arms forward. One more each side, inhale. Exhale, reach those arms away from each other, long, tall spine. And come back center, good. And inhale, and exhale, reach, long and tall. Inhale, and exhale, come back to the center, bring the arms down and roll the shoulders back. All right, I'm gonna do a time check because, oh my, okay. Um, I couldn't see the time and that's been very clear. So this class went a little long and I wanted to do more. Well, maybe I'll do a little standing segment that you guys can practice on your own. Maybe I can record that 
Genevieve with you. Um, so I'd like to add an additional track, but um, I guess we need to finish up. So let's just put the ball down. And it, I invite you to stand up at this point and just see how you feel, um, everybody. So if you can stand up, if it's not a, a true labor, can you stand up and just feel your feet into the floor, feel your legs, feel your spine, your pelvis, your shoulders, your upper back. Even if you're sitting still and you don't want to get up, does your carriage feel different? We did a lot of upper back work, more than you probably bargained for. Um, I guess I got a little carried away today. So um, I hope you feel good. And um, thank you for coming. And I will see you next time. So take care. And are you done?